Dance music often seems like a genre that's fascinated by its own past, and yet it's not a genre that's terribly good at curating its own history. There aren't a lot of lavishly packaged and thoughtfully compiled box sets. None of the major dance albums of the 90s have had the deluxe reissue treatment they deserve. I think it's a shame, but perhaps it's a situation that's changing. Last year saw Terry Farley's brilliant Acid Rain box set, and now there's this, the snappily titled 3CD set, Suburban Bass Records, The History of Hardcore Jungle Drum and Bass 1991-97. It isn't quite as definitive or exhaustive in its approach. In fact, that title's a bit cheeky, given that it only features the output of one label, albeit an important one. That said, it is a fantastic collection of music. The Too Bad Mice remix of Future Assassin's Future Sound. <laughs> Runtings Rough Revival. <laughs> Remarks R.I.P. <laughs> and despite the huge quantity of stuff that's outside its remit, it does succeed in showing the way one area of dance music progressed. The really striking thing you get from the box set is a sense of the sheer speed at which the scene moved. There's a huge sonic gulf between, say, Sons of a Loop de Loop era's Day Glow hardcore anthem Far Out and D Cruz's haunting drum and bass track Lonely. <laughs> The fact they were made barely two years apart from each other seems oddly mind-blowing. This is music with its eyes fixed ahead, hurtling along at light speed. Maybe that's why, 20 years on, the contents of the suburban bass box don't sound dated. I'm an old raver, imagine how fetching I look in a smog mask waving a glow stick, and I'm not going to deny that the nostalgic tingle I get from hearing something like Cubase's Hardcore Will Never Die is strong, but most of what's here doesn't sound like a recently excavated archaeological artifact. It sounds alive. Maybe Cubase had a point. It's out now. <laughs>